So we didn't get a new trailer this week. We could only be so lucky to get that two weeks in a row. But we do have a lot of news about the Wheel of Time to talk about. We have some new castings, some interesting trends as it goes for the popularity of the Wheel of Time, some incredible trailer reactions, and some really cool stuff going on in the community. So join me as we break down all of the news and notes from the past week on the Wheel of Time. <laughs> So this may not be as exciting as a brand new trailer drop, but nevertheless, there was a bunch of really interesting news surrounding the Wheel of Time TV show this past week. With the trailer out, marketing is kicking up a gear, and Wheel of Time is coming up everywhere. This is certainly an exciting time to be a Wheel of Time fan. So before diving into the news, let's get a couple things out of the way. First, I want to thank the video's sponsor, my patrons. Making quality content in the Wheel of Time world means spending literally all of your free time working on this stuff, including some cheat time while you're at your real job. I'm not a full-time YouTuber yet, and my patrons are the people helping me get closer to that goal. Some of you have been supporting the channel for almost two years now, and I could not be more appreciative. If you enjoy the content and you want me to be making more and more of it, or if you want to have a say in the types of content I create, please consider checking out my Patreon, as that is the best way of supporting the channel. Thanks to all of you who already support the channel and the greatblight.com through Patreon, you are all appreciated. So let's hit the spoiler warning on the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of yellow with only minor non-plot based spoilers. I will be talking about some special characters that you may not want to hear about or that might be somewhat spoilery, but I'm not going to dive into anything about the plot. You have been warned. So let's go ahead and kick off the news with some casting news. I've got two pieces of casting news here. One of these is a confirmation of something that we already had an idea about. And the other one is a scoop from a fellow YouTuber. So let's go ahead and hop right on in. So it was speculated based on Instagram photos weeks ago that Sierra Coveney was going to be cast on the show. And there was discussion as to whether she would be playing Avienda or Elaine or maybe somebody else. The consensus with most fans, including myself, was that Sierra would be playing Elaine, but no one was really sure. Now, according to some inside sources from John over at What Up, as well as some other places that I've been able to independently confirm this, we can safely say that she will be playing Elaine Tricand in the show. Despite all of these exciting announcements for season one, and understandably so, some have forgotten that they are actually currently filming season two. Sierra is in Prague right now actually filming, all but confirming that we are not going to have the Tricans in season one of the show, but they will appear in season two. Now Sierra is almost a dead on casting for Elaine in at least my head canon. She's beautiful, she has perfect red hair, and she has the delicate features that Elaine is kind of described with. That being said, I have not seen her act, but there is a show reel up on Vimeo that I watched, and I feel like she's really going to be very, very good based on those performances. I'm curious what you guys think. I'm going to have that Vimeo link in the description of this video. Watch that, and then comment on the video and let me know what you think she's going to be as Elaine. I think she looks really good. Another casting leak, again from John at What Up, comes from the form of a Luz Theron casting. Now keep in mind, neither this one or the Sierra Coveney casting are confirmed by Amazon, so take that with a grain of salt, but it seems that Swedish actor Alexander Karim has been cast in the role as Luz Theron Telemann for season one. Now Alexander is a TV and movie actor known for his roles in Dying of the Light, Zero Dark Thirty, and Tyrant. Kareem is 45 years old and he seems to be a very well respected actor. In terms of his role in season one, this we don't really have a lot to go on. Not only are we unsure what episodes he's going to be in, it's not clear how big of a role he's going to play either. Now what is interesting about this is that it likely does confirm that we will either be getting the prologue in some form or some flashbacks to the age of Legends. It's not likely that Kareem will be playing the role of a particular voice in a particular character's head quite yet. Now I had always thought that they could do the prologue in two ways if they wanted to include it. One is they could have a cold open to the show in general before the credits and the opening theme and then show the passage of time after the prologue. The second way that they could do it would be a flashback when they're discussing the Dragon Reborn later in the season, just kind of giving some context to that discussion. While it's unclear which of these or whatever other way they might go involving Luce Theron, it is clear that he will be making an appearance in season one. So what do you all think about the casting? How do you think they're going to use Luce Theron in season one of the show? Let me know in the comments of the video. 
So one of the amazing things this past week has been the rising popularity of the Wheel of Time trailer. Released roughly a week ago now, at the time of making this video, the trailer sits at roughly 10 million views on the English Amazon Prime account, and roughly the same on the Indian account, which is amazing. In one week, the trailer has almost as many views as trailers from Amazon that came out during the Super Bowl, and have been up more than three years. To say that there is excitement surrounding this show is an absolute understatement. This is not including people that watch the trailers on their Amazon account, on Twitter, or on Instagram. This is only YouTube. So I can't overstate this. This is a very big deal. I know that the showrunners are privately very, very happy with the reception to the trailer, and they are really excited to get the show out to us. This level of interest is backed up if you take a look at the Google Trends data. If you look at the historical data for the history of the series, Wheel of Time is getting more interest on the internet right now than ever before. It has more than doubled the interest when the series was completed when Memory of Light came out, and there has been an over 750% increase in Google searches related to the Wheel of Time in the last month. That is nuts. So one of the more amazing things to do over the past week has been to watch the many, many reaction videos from non-readers on YouTube. If you haven't done this so far, go ahead and do that. Seeing people react live to the trailer is really cool. As you can see, the vast majority of them are blown away and very interested in watching the show. It's certainly something that I did a lot of when I got done making my trailer breakdown video and I had a moment to breathe. It was really interesting to watch. Another thing that has been exciting is seeing people react that are in the know about the show. One such person is Brandon Sanderson. Now on his YouTube channel, he was asked during a live signing session about his thoughts on the Wheel of Time trailer. Now I'm gonna play you guys a short clip here, but if you wanna see his full comments, go check out that video. I don't wanna steal views from him. You should all be subscribed to him anyway, so go check him out. But let me go ahead and play a very short clip here. What are your thoughts so far on the Wheel of Time season one trailer? And how do you think the first season is going to be received? How do I think? I think that the trailer looks great. My, what I have said is the Wheel of Time TV show, I think the episodes and the writing are excellent. Um, I have really enjoyed reading them. I think they do a very good job. And uh, I think the quality is very high. I think that the changes are larger than with Game of Thrones, as I've said. Um, and that it would be best if fans view this uh, adaptation as a different turning of the wheel from the books. So I've used the, the, the Lord of the Rings films as an example of the level of adaptation um, where, you know, enormous sections of the Lord of the Rings had to be cut, um, other character arcs had to be changed, and things like that. Uh, that is what we're looking at. I am very pleased, as a fan and as a writer, with the quality of content that I have read. Um, there, are, um, there are no episodes that I felt were bad, and there are, um, there's at least one 10 out of 10. Um, as far as television that I have ever read. What do I think? I think that people are going to love it. Uh, the thing that they, um, if you don't love it, it's probably going to be because they, the showrunners have um, changed things equivalent to, for instance, taking out the scouring of the Shire um, or um, changing the character arc for Aragorn a little bit and things like that. <clears throat> so there you go. So as you can see, Brandon thinks pretty highly of the show. One of the comments I loved here is when he said there are no bad episodes and that one of them was a complete 10 out of 10. Now this is coming from somebody who has written for television and is obviously pretty intimate knowledge of the Wheel of Time. Now there isn't a lot here that Brandon hasn't said publicly before, but if you haven't heard this before, it's good to know that the people behind the books are also behind the show. Yes, there are going to be changes. They have been preparing us for that from day one of the announcement. But according to Brandon, he thinks that fans are going to love what we see. And I'm certainly hoping so. He compares this to Lord of the Rings. I know most Lord of the Rings fans are happy with the original trilogy 
even though it is different from the books. Some aren't, but I think the vast majority are, and it was clearly a very popular set of movies. I'm hoping The Wheel of Time gets a similar treatment. So there are a couple nice pieces of community news I think are worth mentioning. For one, The Wheel of Time Twitter handle has started shouting out artists every other Friday, and it kicked that off this week with Corey Lansdell. Now, Corey is an absolutely amazing artist. He has created some amazing art based around the cast. Specifically, they tweeted out a drawing of Alvaro Morte that he made. Make sure to follow Corey on Twitter and Instagram because his stuff is absolutely incredible and I love that the Wheel of Time account is doing this. Another thing of note is about music. For those of you who have been watching my channel for a long time, you will notice the music that plays at the beginning and at the end of my videos. Now that music comes from an artist called Reflections of Sound and they are now on Spotify and Apple Music. Reflections of Sound has an entire album of Wheel of Time related songs and will be creating more as the show comes out. Make sure to listen to their stuff in Apple Music and on Spotify as they get a small cut of money when people do that. I'll have links in the description of the video. Let's make sure to give them some listens if you like their music. And lastly, my good friend Lauren at Unraveling the Pattern here on YouTube just hit a huge milestone. He hit 10,000 subscribers. Lauren makes incredible videos and he was just on a live stream with me last week. Congratulations, Lauren, on 10,000 and here's two millions more. And now let's hit the winners from last week's contest. Last week's contest was to give away five Tarval and Harbor Master t-shirts. The winners from last week are Christopher Gale, Scott McRae, Gwendolyn Martin, Gaming Forever, and Kimberly Green. Make sure to message me on Discord so I can get your details to get the shirts shipped out to you guys. Congrats, everybody. And now for this week's contest. This week, I will be sending out this custom-made map of the two rivers. It'll be on a canvas, and you get to keep it. So, how do you enter? Well, as always, you must be subscribed to the channel. If you aren't subscribed, you won't be eligible. Next. The contest is all about Twitter. So when this video goes live, I will have a tweet with the map up and you must follow me on Twitter and then reply to that tweet saying that you want to enter the contest. So to recap, subscribe to the channel, like the video, follow me on Twitter, and reply to the tweet about the map so that you can enter the contest. Simple enough. I will have the winners for you next week. So that's it for the news, peoples. Let me know what you thought of all of this in the comments of the video, and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I will have a breakdown coming out Sunday of all of the things that we did not see in the trailer that we know will be in the books, so stay tuned for that. Hey, if you wanna support the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon, and thanks for watching the video today, guys. Again, make sure to like and subscribe, and until next time, peace out. Think you're in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?